Demon Slayer continues to output some of the most solid and consistent anime we are seeing this season. This episode featured so many incredible, well-animated scenes, but also had a lot of character development and really solid writing. So, like always with Demon Slayer, we pick up directly from the last episode, and it seems that after his discussion with Tanjiro, it's changed him. And now he's using his power to save Kotetsu and other people, rather than just ignore it and likely leave these people to die or be gravely injured. Now, I did read some comments from last week's video and some of the community tab posts, and as we know, this season of Demon Slayer has a particularly high number of haters for some reason. I mean, it is one of the biggest anime of all time, so there is going to be some haters much like there is for Attack on Titan, which we also cover here. But they brought up that Muichiro suddenly changed his whole ideology after one conversation. Now, I think this is really a nitpick and people are overthinking this entirely. Demon Slayer is not an anime like Vinland Saga, which is ironic because people complain about Vinland Saga season two being too much talking and not enough action. The Demon Slayer storytelling is very straightforward on purpose. That's the entire point, so that the themes come directly to the forefront of the story. In other words, it's not trying to be subtle, but to show us in that moment that the power of one person being honest and open can change the minds of those who refuse to have an open mind, or those of which who have never thought of anything else. It's not rocket science, because it doesn't have to be rocket science. This has been established in episode one. So I'm not sure why people keep hammering in that Demon Slayer is air quotes mid, when I bet most of these people probably have never seen a really bad anime like X-Arm. I watched all 12 episodes of that, it's pretty bad. Or really anything else beyond the usual suspects that you often hear talked about. So Murichiro battling the pot demon immediately notices that once he cuts the pot's head off, it simply regenerates. So he instead tries the glowing red spot because you know, every video game ever, which is the pot itself, which <laughs> does the trick. And he also is able to realize that this was most likely created from blood demon techniques. So in a twist of fate, Kotetsu latches onto Moichiro, thanking him for his, you know, saving his life. He even apologizes to him for calling him names, showing his gratitude. After all, Muichiro did save his life, so all of those bad times will of course be quickly forgotten in such a case like this. Keep in mind, he didn't just suddenly change his mind, he had a very good reason here. Kotetsu then tells him that they need to help Kanamori and as well give time to Hage Nezuka, who is working on the 300 year old blade. Good God, I hope I pronounced any of those names right. So I, I guess this also confirms we'll be seeing it in use since this season. Season, so that's super rad. If not, obviously, definitely the next season after this, I think we'll be seeing it. But I do, I wonder what this blade will be like since it's, you know, from Yor Yorichi. Maybe it's going to be some sort of fire blade. He seems kind of like a fiery kind of fellow. Maybe it's like, I, I don't know, uh, another water user. I don't know what Yoruichi used in the past, what his element was, what kind of Hashira he was, because uh, I don't remember. Um, and I don't, I don't remember if they actually told us in the show. But, and by the way, if they didn't, please don't comment any spoilers. Muichiro, hearing all of this that just happened, then has a flashback to the master, telling him that he can find himself again, and that all he needs to do as long as he is alive is survive. That he promises, no matter what, his memories will come back. And it turns out that Muichiro has severe memory loss. It seems like he was in some sort of battle that gravely injured him, which explains a lot of why he's so absently minded these last episodes. It also shows why we shouldn't be too quick to judge a book by its cover, as this is another explanation for why Muichiro suddenly, quote, changed after one conversation with Tanjiro. He has memory issues, guys. Uh, but anyways, the master even states that things which may seem trivial will clear the mist of his head, which is what happened in the last episode of Demon Slayer when Tanjiro offered his help. He cleared some of the mist in Muichiro's head and he helped Muichiro find a piece of himself again, even though it was seemingly a very small piece to be fair. So we then see Muichiro question himself on if he can protect the village. And immediately th this, he catches himself and he restates that no, he can do this. 
So it seems the, that Tanjiro has sort of cracked the wall that is Muichiro's memories, and slowly but surely, the Muichiro that he used to be before he got uh, hurt in this battle is slowly coming back to the forefront, and we're gonna get, probably by the end of this season, or maybe even next season sometime, the actual Muichiro we you know, should have always known that was stolen from whatever calamity bestruck Muichiro. My thoughts is that what we're going to see is that eventually he's going to remember so much that he's going to remember who did this to him, what happened, and that is going to help the Demon Slayers uh, and the Demon Slayer core in some way, whatever the way that may be. But anyways, back with Tanjiro, he is being terrorized by one of the Upper Moon's clones. He slashes at him, but that just ends up creating two even more smaller demons who can now use their sonic voices to attack. But as soon as they attack, he quickly realizes that, wow, they pack a huge punch. But the more they're split up, the weaker they get. So this means finally for the first time in Sea Tactics history, I was right about a theory. Hooray! So now Tanjiro's goal is set to uh, get to Nezuko and Genya to relay this information, which is the information that everyone watching this video should subscribe and drop a like. It really helps me out in the algorithm and grow the channel a lot more. Speaking of, we return to Genya and Nezuko-chan as the two demons torment the two demon slayers. I think the aspect of the clones having different personalities is just so unique and it makes all of this just so much more fun because I think with Without it, this would kind of be sort of, I don't know, depressing and kind of downtrodden. But with these personalities, you kind of like look forward to see how each of them will react in this battle, which I think is really cool. So Ginya appropriately blows the staff wielder's head clean off with his double barrel shoddy. Freaking awesome, by the way. However, this leads to the demon pulling out his staff from Ginya's stomach and slashing it open. Uh, and the demon is perplexed why Ginya at this point isn't dying. After all, he has had his vital slash and attack so much already. So Genya then starts to chant the Amida Sutra, which the demon immediately notices him as this devout man. I assume they think, oh, he's gonna die here. But the spear demon then attacks, but Genya moves out of the way so quickly and attacks, but still is hit by the lightning of the demon. However, the demons are still confused. Why is Genya not dying? And indeed, that is a great question, something that throughout this episode in the last episode, I think a lot of people have been asking, what's up with Ginya? Why is he so unique? But back to Nezuko, she is pierced by the leg of the other demon. But as well, we all know Nezuko has the more talented legs and kicks off the head of a demon, still being skewered by its leg. All I gotta say is, uh, to quote, Tanjiro from season one, and that's our Nezuko. Beauty of our village. So then she uses her demon blood to light the demon on fire, which is a really cool moment. Anytime Nezuko uses her demon blood, it's so beautiful. I love the lighting, how Ufo Table does all of this. It's just so unique. And then she uses her fan to send the demon flying. But once again, the numbers game comes into play and the demon pierced her neck with his electric staff and a admittedly top 10 painful anime deaths of all time kind of move here which goes to show that the big thing with this demon is that it's just the numbers game. Yes, it has a weakness that the more you slash at them, they get weaker, but you have to get them and whittle them down to that point and getting them down and whittling them down to that point may be not easy of a task for a demon slayer, but it, it, it's certainly uh, much easier than a human doing that. So definitely these demons are some of the most powerful we've seen yet just because of this ability. Whether or not they're the toughest or the strongest, I don't think really matters. It's this ability that makes them strong. However, as this is happening, the demon asks Ginya who this guy is because he has survived so many different attacks and well, turns out he is the immortal Ginya. Oh my God, I'm so freaking hyped for this character. However, it seems Ginya isn't the only one with something up their sleeve as Tanjiro uses the demon's own ability of flight against him to fly back to Ginya and Nezuko. The plan actually works and there he sees his sister being shocked by the demon and the demon sees him as well. So the demon goes to attack Tanjiro with his staff but he actually uses the leg of the prior flying demon to block the attack. As it turns out, in a twist of fate, the lightning cannot pass through any Anything made from the demon's cells. And all I gotta say, 
I'm really impressed with Tanjiro this episode and really this entire season because it really shows how quick thinking he is in battle against these demons. He's really learned quite a bit on his journey. And I don't even think the Tanjiro from season two would be able to compare to what he is now in season three. I honestly think his battles with Daki and Gutaro and what he learned from Tengen really taught him quite a bit and made him a much more tough and much more resilient fighter all around. In other words, he clearly leveled up after the last season. So this in turn allows Tanjiro to save Nezuko and, and even allow Nezuko to use her demon blood again to burn the demons before it could kill Tanjiro. So in a freaking amazing scene, all I gotta say is that I love these two so much. When these two are on screen together and they're fighting together, I don't know what it is, but there's some sort of, maybe it's the camaraderie, maybe it's the familial bond between these two that just makes it so relatable and just so, I don't know, comfy. But these two together on screen, just never make them separate. They gotta be together forever. <laughs> That's how it feels at least. But once again, no matter what, these three can do, there will be no match for the unbeatable numbers game of these demons. And it's just a huge issue. So the, really the only way that they're going to be able to combat against these numbers is that they're probably just going to have to match it with really solid numbers like oh i don't know maybe uh maybe the last scene in this anime where we see the townspeople of swordsmith village fight off yet another disgusting looking pot demon by the way all the while my wife and remember i called dibs on mitsuri first none of y'all did makes her way into the fray so i think mitsuri is really going to be tipping the scales of this battle i think this is the final key they need because i don't think they exactly need to you know match the demons one to one i just think they need a solid core group and this is a situation where clearly a solid group over numbers is better and I think the demons are going to find out here that the numbers game at some point doesn't really pan out for them. The, the math just doesn't work. So I'm so hyped for my wife's dibs, by the way, return to Demon Slayer. But after this episode, I'm really impressed with how they're developing Muichiro. He truly seems like a big focus of this season, which let's be real, death flags are all over this character simply for that fact. And you know how anime is when developing characters only to kill them off. I mean, look at Rogoku as an example. He was only in the show for a cup of joe. However, I think this episode was another just really solid episode. And much like Muichiro, Ginya, also death flags, also seems to be getting a big focus as well. What with his awesome Doom Slayer double barrel. However, I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories coming out of this episode. Please do comment your thoughts below and as well check out my last video on Demon Slayer Season 3 if you have not already. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!